Howdy folks, hope you're all doing well. Um, so this is a video I've been meaning to get around to doing for quite a while um, and never quite seem to find the right opportunity. Um, so this is uh, basically going to be uh, a, a, what I promised a little while ago, uh, which is a kind of warts and all review of um, some of the Filson jackets that I have. Um, uh, I know these are, uh, these. you know, Filson is a huge name, hugely expensive jackets, really popular with outdoors people. Um, and with good reason, you know, they're, they are good jackets. Um, but uh, this is going to be a bit of a warts and all review. So I'm going to cover some of the good points, the things that I really like about the jackets. And some of the not so good points either. And really, I think I'm going to kind of ask the question as to whether or not they're actually worth the money that you pay for them. Um, so, uh, I'm on my second cup of coffee of the day, um, it's still the morning and I'm still a little bit slow, so uh, bear with me. Well, let's jump right onto the review. Ah, boom. Oh, right folks, I'm going to give this one last try. Everything is conspiring against me to get this video done today. <laughs> and uh, I am hopeless at doing review videos. I just end up waffling on. So I'm going to try and keep it as brief as possible. Filson jackets. I'm only going to talk about the tin cloth ones and uh, the Mackinac wool liner because that's, that's what I've got experience of. And it, this video really is just to feed back some of my thoughts about them, both good and bad. Uh, because as anybody who knows Filson knows, they are very expensive jackets. And I would like anybody who watches this video to know exactly what they're getting before they shell out the money for them. So to start off, without a doubt, my go-to Filson jacket is this Cruiser. Um, it's a good solid jacket, tin cloth for the benefit of those people in the English speaking world who are not in North America. Um, it's just a fancy name for a wax cotton canvas. Um, it's a good quality cloth, decent hard wearing. Actually this jacket gets a lot of use in the summer months um, as a lightweight motorcycle jacket because although it's not going to protect me in a fall from broken bones and things like that it's such a good solid cloth um, you know it will probably protect me from a, the worst of any gravel rash on a really hot day when I don't want to be wearing leathers it's a good coat without a doubt it's a good jacket I'm not saying it's not but got a couple of issues um, and they are similar with any of the tin cloth stuff. Now the first is that tin cloth itself is a cold material. Um, it's a cold fabric. If I put my hand on that, this fabric is significantly cooler than the ambient room temperature. Um, and when you wear it, you know about it first thing in the morning. When you put this coat on, it feels cold. Um, if you've been, if you left it in your car overnight or something like that, and you put it on first thing in the morning, it's cold. You have to wear something underneath this that keeps you warm, because this jacket is not designed to keep you warm. Um, it is designed to keep the rain off, the sleep, things like that, snow. Um, it is not designed as a warm jacket. I wear wool underneath. Uh, pretty much any, whether it's a wool shirt like I'm wearing today or if it's a wool jumper or whatever. Um, in the summer months, it's actually pretty cool. You know, it's a cooling fabric. Uh, you wear a light shirt under it um, and it's fine of an evening. But in the winter time, in the bad weather, when you really want it to, uh, to do its job, do not rely upon it as being a warm jacket because a warm jacket it is not. It literally sucks the warmth out of you. You can feel it when you first put it on. And with that said, this is one of the things that kind of annoys me a little bit about it. Considering the money that you spend on one of these things, you'd expect it at least to have a liner. This jacket right now to buy here in the UK is £460. 
if you want the version which has a cotton lining in it, you're looking at £510. Um, now, they didn't do the cotton lined ones, I don't think, when I bought this three, four years ago, whenever it was. Otherwise, I would have, without a doubt, would have bought one with a lining. Um, frankly, for that kind of money, um, I'd expect it to have a little bit of a lining in, just a light bit of drop cloth or whatever inside, you know. But there you go. Um, it's a bit of a minor grumble. But here's a bit more of a major grumble on, along the same lines. These hand warming pockets, what are they all about? I can tell you for a fact these do not warm your hands. <laughs> you might, in the driving rain, in the pissing rain, something like that, you can put your hand in there and it might, might stop the worst of the sleet from uh, freezing your fingers off. But it is not going to warm your hands. This is, as I say, it's a cold fabric. Um, for a fraction of the price of one of these jackets, Barber who, in my opinion, make a jacket every bit as solid and long-lasting as a Filson jacket. They put a nice um, moleskin liner in their pocket, in their hand-warming pockets, so that it actually does what it's supposed to do. That's something I'd like to see on this as well. Uh, because you genuinely you can't really use these pockets for anything else. Um, you know, the, the way that they're designed, things are going to fall out of them. You might put a tape measure in there or something like that. Certainly I've um, put my for my loggers tape in there before now, um, but uh, when it comes to GPS, if I'm carrying an expensive piece of equipment around, it goes into one of these drop pockets. I'm sure drop pockets. I'm sure as hell not going to put it in these these hand warming pockets here. Um, so yeah, that's it basically. Um, I'd, I'd also say there's there's quite a lot of single stitching along the hems, up the. Uh, uh, the closure of the coat up here. Um, now these buckles, uh, these these poppers, good quality poppers. They don't uh, they don't pop open too easily. But um, again, for the money, I'd expect to see a little bit more solidly stitched. The only place I've really got double stitching on here is up the arms, uh, around the shoulders, and where the front is stitched to the back. That's pretty much it. Again, not too much of a harsh criticism because this is a really good solid jacket. But for the money, just just something to consider. Similarly, like I say, that right now that particular model of jacket four hundred and fifty pounds. This one here, to the best of my knowledge, they've stopped making. Uh, I have not been able to find it on a Google search or check in their website. This is the Packer. This is a winter coat really for me. Um, it's bigger, it's more bulky, it's heavier. It's got a lot more fabric on it. Um, it's got a Mackinac wool collar, you know, that you can turn up, keep the, uh, you know, keep the worst of the weather and the rain and the wind off, which is nice. Um, and I think when I bought this four years ago, something like that, I think I paid between five and six hundred pounds for it. Um, again, you know, there's no liner. You have to buy the liner separately, and I'll get to that now. So the Mackinac wool jacket liner. This zips in and then attaches by means of a button to the neck up here. Uh, making the jacket significantly bigger and heavier and consequently warmer. A little bit more difficult to move around in, but you expect that in a winter coat, you know. Um, £350 for this. So between the jacket and the coat and the liner, you're looking at the best part of £1,000 for this coat. That is a lot of money to be spending. And if you're spending that kind of money on a coat, I'd be asking, why? Um, what are you really going to use it for to justify spending that amount of money? Um, now, this one doesn't get nearly as much use. I wear this one season. This uh, is my three-season jacket, the Cruiser. 
this one generally only gets worn kind of uh, winter when it's sideways rain, uh, when it's you know a lot colder. To be quite honest, I very rarely even use the liner that's inside it because for this country anyway, here in in the UK, uh, at least in, in southern England, um, it's too warm. It's too too big and bulky and heavy and warm for this kind of climate. Probably very much more suited to you know. Um, to where it's made, um, you know, but that's okay. It's a good quality cloth, you know. The, the Mackinac wool, great. But I'd also ask whether or not it's worth three hundred and fifty quid. I mean, I've got other wool clothing. Well, the shirt I'm wearing for a start at the moment, British made, Bison Bushcraft, one hundred and twenty, one hundred and thirty quid. Really nice, every bit, every bit the quality of this wool, every bit, every bit as well stitched and everything else, half the price. So I'd ask whether or not it's really worth it. Um, Filson make money from their name, without a doubt. Now, that's not to say that their coats are not good quality. This is definitely a good quality coat, without a doubt. But is it worth the money? Well, it kind of depends. Uh, I think it's very much down to personal choice. Would I buy one again? Well, no, is the answer to that question. But the only reason is not because of the quality, uh, but because they've stopped making these in the US. They've started exporting production to other countries. don't know whether that's China, India, whatever, I don't know. Um, I would happily buy another Filson coat if I knew it was American-made and not made in some sweatshop uh, in another country. Now that they've outsourced their production, uh, to be quite honest, I'm going to buy something else instead. Good coat. Like I say, can't fault it in a lot of respects, but uh, yeah, if I'm spending that much money on something, I expect it to tick a lot more boxes uh, than this actually does. And part, you know, with with the process, the manufacturing now being outsourced, yeah, one of those big boxes is is left unticked for me. So there you go. Um, and finally, I will just say, I've got a Filson hat as well, and this is the thing. That, this is where you really start to see that Filson are making their money out of their name more than anything else. This is a really simply designed hat. It's a single layer of tin cloth. It's well stitched together, sure, double stitching up here, cotton lining band, um, leather, uh, leather hat band. So a decent, decent hat to keep the rain off, sure as hell not to keep your head warm, that's for sure. Uh, I don't wear it very often now because I'm kind of used to wearing my Akuba, I prefer a much bigger brim, but um, you know, it's alright. But the thing that gets my goat is these are now retailing for between 80 and 120 pounds in the UK, which is a ridiculous amount of money for a hat like that, in my opinion. Um, they're baseball caps, um, things like, yeah, they're just stupid little things like the strap for a bag. Ridiculous amounts of money, totally unjustifiable amounts of money. I think I, I saw a, a, a bag strap for one of their Filson bags. And they wanted forty-five pounds for it, and it was literally just a webbing. It was a webbing strap that you can pick up off of Amazon, eBay, whatever, for for, for peanuts. And I just don't believe uh, that anything that has gone into the making of that product justifies the amount of money for them. Um, again, it's a decent enough hat, but uh, I, I wouldn't really say it's worth the money myself. So there you go. Um, I mean, looking at UK brands, I don't own one anymore. Um, but if you wanted an alternative to the Filson, uh, go with a barber every time. Barber jackets are made every bit as well as Filson jackets. And I reckon will last every bit as long. Um, but they've got those features, <coughs> excuse me, that Filson don't have. They've got a lining, you know, which is, they've got a lining inside. That's a big deal. They've got hand warming pockets that actually warm your hands. Um, they are every bit as solid and well built as a Filson jacket and they are a fraction, a third of the cost, easily. 
Um, so I would go with a barber. The only thing is, uh, and this is purely personal preference, I like the style, I like the cut of these jackets. That's what, one of the things that attracted me to them in the first place. I like the general style. Uh, and I do, you know, I love them. I, don't get me wrong. Uh, for, for however much I criticise these, you know, the Filsners and organisation as a company and the amount of money that they're charging for their stuff, I do love their jackets. But uh, in my opinion, they ain't worth the money. Got a bit of wear going on here. But there you go. Um, that's my tuppence on Filson jackets. I hope this video works out well and I hope it hasn't bored the crap out of you. Um, so advice to buyers, especially those of you this side of the pond, you know, who are perhaps thinking of getting one of these, there are other good alternatives that are British made, Barber being one of them. Um, if you like the style, if you've got the disposable income, sure, go for it. But bear in mind, I don't think the new Felsen jackets are going to match the quality of the older ones with the uh, processes now being outsourced to, you know, um, I don't know whether it's uh, China or in. Right, well, uh, GoPro decided to cut me off there, so uh, I'm going to wrap the video up anyway. Um, yeah, all I would say, folks, uh, if you're thinking about buying a Felsen jacket, Try and get second hand. Um, you won't be disappointed in the quality probably, but uh, yeah, you'll probably save yourself a lot of money getting a second hand one. Uh, but there you go, that's it. That's my uh, my Leo's Tuppence review of Filson jackets. You guys take it easy. I will catch you again soon.